Good morning. <laughs> this is Angela with today's cup of tea. Okay, I'm getting through this time. <laughs> I started coming in with one topic. At the very last second, I got, no, 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 this is the topic for today. And very clearly, and um, obviously somebody who's watching this or who will watch this when they watch it will get this and need to have this topic. So onward I go. I trust that. Um, but I've done this several times, like giving the doorbell ringing and my cat interrupting and everything else. But anyhow. So we're going through this time of great change. We're going through this whole evolutionary period. We're coming into you know the mind calendars over. We're shepherding in a new age. We are um, really expanding exponentially and moving faster, changing faster than we have ever changed before. And so, what does that mean in our lives day to day? Many, many people, and many people I'm working with today, are coming to crossroads in their lives, major crossroads, and they have to make a decision. And what's happened is we've become so dependent on our egos making decisions in the earth realm at this level of consciousness that we get stuck. Because as I've talked about before, the ego is sort of like a, a pawn on a game board and how it can see the space in front of it, the space behind it, all the spaces around it. It can see um, what the other pawns around it are doing and what's worked for them and what hasn't. And so it makes the decisions based on that, on those experiences. It can't, yet the higher self is the player. The higher self can see the whole game board. Not only that, but it creates the game board and it creates the game. So the key, number one, is to remember that divinity, to remember that larger perspective that we actually have the access to. And it's just a matter of quieting the chatter, learning how to tap in, and then trusting that connection. And because that connection is always, the higher self is always going to do what is highest and best and what is going to be our personal legend of what's going to make our soul sing and what we really, really wanted to experience in the highest and best way. But it's the ego that gets in the way. And it's the ego that we have gotten into the habit of trusting in making those decisions. Well, what happens with that? The ego then brings in fear and anxieties and, well, we don't know that that's unknown. If we take this path, it might be not quite so comfortable, not quite happy. It might make us a little miserable, but at least we know what it is. How many of us make decisions based on that? How many of us are in relationships that are defunct, that are not serving us anymore, and yet we're still in them because they're comfortable? They're not necessarily doing anything for us or not helping us reach our highest and best. How many jobs, how many people are in jobs that are doing the same thing? How many people are just sort of slaves to their job because they feel like, well, I've got to pay my bills. But here's the thing. You might be paying your bills, but what if you're sick all the time? What if it's making you sick because you are that miserable at your job? That's happening all, all over. How many times, oh, here's a great one. Here's a great one. Do, do people say, well, yeah, I'm sick, I'm, you know, I'm unhealthy, I get sick all the time, I have 500 things wrong with me, I'm constantly on medications, but I only eat fast food, I don't, I only eat junk, I eat pres uh, preserved frozen food all the time, and you know, I just, I just don't have the time to do this, I don't have the time to cook this stuff, it's such a pain, blah, 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 blah to cook, you know, fresh or organic or new or cost more money, well, because your ego is telling you this because it's comfortable, but well, because it takes you out of a comfort zone to change the way you're living or eating. And you're saying, well, well, instead of looking at the big picture, you're saying, oh, well, you're finding excuses to make it to make that path, you know, this, the same path you're going to take. So, like I said, that happens in so many portions of our lives just because we've gotten into such a habit of letting our ego make decisions. <sighs> so we're coming to this time where that's not going to be, you know, we're we're not allowing that to happen anymore. We are assimilating the ego into all levels of our consciousness and helping let all levels of our consciousness actually have equal say and, and, and assimilated, make assimilated decisions um, for us so that we can reach our highest and best path. I've had the same thing happen to me, and I counsel people on this all the time, but I've had the same thing happen to me. I left corporate purposefully in 2006 because I... I'd had it for 17 years and I'd been successful at it and um, it made me miserable and it made me sick and gave me headaches and everything else. So I left and started an herb nursery, an organic herb nursery and loved it and then um, we were just starting to make ends meet and then the economy crashed. And when that crashed, that put me at a crossroads. What do I do? 
Do I still, do I tough it out with this nursery? Or do I, um, I go back to corporate? Or wait, here's a third option. What if I started my own marketing business because I did marketing management in corporate? I started down the path of going the comfortable route. I actually got offered a job back in corporate. Pretty much the same position, same kind of paycheck I've been making, and it literally made me ill. Ill, like my stomach, I wanted to throw up. I couldn't do it. So, uh, you know, I, I had opened up myself enough so that my higher self had said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. That's not, that's not for us. So instead, I came up with a third path that said, okay, well, how about I do marketing as a business for small businesses? Because that's, um, that's what's going to, you know, I know it. And, and now I'm comfortable in that whole, you know, self-employed thing. And it worked really well for a while. The company was doing really well. And I loved it. And then I had my grand awakening. Well, there's my higher self tapping on my shoulder saying, oh, no, no, now it's time for us to do what we came here to do. And I wasn't comfortable with it. It, it was a, I, if you've read my stories on my website and all that kind of stuff, it was, it was a long process for me. And I ignored it for a long time. Um, or I tried to ignore it for a long time. But the more I tried to ignore it and the path that I was taking on my business, the more it started throwing itself, that path started throwing itself into the path I had taken. So what had happened was um, I suddenly found that, number one, a lot of projects I was working on that did not serve my highest purpose would get delayed after delay, after delay, after delay. No matter what I tried to schedule in, I'd have like weird things, computer crashes or some um, weird emergency that would just take my attention away completely so that I couldn't get the projects done. Wow, and it was just so frustrating. It would get worse and worse and worse. Or the other part is many of the people, the clients that I worked with, turned into I was counseling them on what they were passionate about, what uh, made their hearts sing so that they could build a business around that. And before I knew it, well, okay, that was a training ground for what I do today with the spiritual intuitive guidance and helping people find their highest and best path and healing and clearing all the stuff that's, you know, help, uh, acting as an obstacle along the way. So... At some point, it got so bad that it really just put up a huge brick wall and said, no, you're done with this path, which put me at another crossroads. And now I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to try this because obviously I feel like this is the way I'm supposed to go. And I did. And I love what I'm doing today. <clears throat> it's been scary. There have been times that it's been scary. But you know what? I never have looked back. And, I, and I'm so glad... I didn't take that other route and go back because I think eventually I would have gotten to the point of either I would have sabotaged it or something would have come up that I would have had to have left that corporate job again anyway. So that's what happens. And it's happening more and more that no matter how much, if we try taking that comfortable road, which is what the ego always wants to do more times than not, what's going to happen is now instead of your higher self saying, okay, we'll let you play it, play it out. You want the trauma drama analysis, that's your problem. Um, to the ego. But now we're going through this period of transformation. We're going through this period of we're trying to get to this level of that, that Earth 2.0, that we're coming back to our divinity. Their higher self saying, nope, not enough time for this. I'm going to give you a crosswords again. Nope, we're going to throw this in again. Nope, we're going to throw it in again. So you're going to come across it and you're going to get obstacles that are going to steer you over to that path. And um, they'll get more and more extreme as you go. So the key is to embrace change. The key is that we are um, the only thing that's constant is change. So if something, and this comes back to how many times have I said in these webcasts, if it doesn't serve you, let it fall away. So like I said, relationships, jobs, you know, what you're doing, where you're living, how you're living, um, all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, why would we not want the highest and best for ourselves? Why would we not want grace and ease and balance and harmony and joy and fun and excitement? I personally pr pr prefer that way. And there's no rule book that says you have to get there by going the trauma, drama, or illness route. That's a belief that we have embedded into ourselves. That is something that we've like caused ourselves to, you know, um, how we've disempowered ourselves by saying, oh, no, we have to go through this pain, this struggle to get to this place. Um, no, the, we make the playbooks at the higher level. So... <clears throat> write down a list in your life of if you have every number one if you had everything fall away everything no problems whatsoever you had whatever you didn't have to worry about money sustenance you had a place to live you had all this kind of stuff and everything was perfect where would you live what would you be doing who would you be with and what would your life look like just do that 
And don't let the ego come in and say, oh, well, and start worrying. Just do that perfect dream and fantasy of what that would be. And then say, why am I not doing that? And when the ego starts kicking in, well, you know, a lot of it has to do, these are the things that are going to come up, all this muck to clear up, because those are all beliefs. They're all beliefs that we just have to clear. So the first step is being able to embrace change. So the first step in the clearing that I have today is to um, allow to, um, number one, clear all etheric agreements that say we have to um, that change is painful, that we have to experience change in a painful way, that things that are new have to be painful or scary. So we are going to clear all those out. We're going to resolve, dissolve, clear and release those. Thank all of the, th all the parties involved. See how it served us. See how it served the others. See how it served us to be without it, without those beliefs. Then we're going to get um, creator's belief, uh, creator's truth and clarity on how change you know what change is for and um on on how change has to be and that's perceived versus actual and that and all of the and we're going to pull all the beliefs of that change has to be painful that change is scary that change is negative in any way that it, and and we're going to replace it with the belief of change is positive change is consistently positive and helps bring us to our highest and best and to give us all the feelings that are related to that to clear out all the energy and negative stuff that that caused it caused us to believe that in the beginning but then we're going to just sort of clear that out clear out those beliefs and then put in all these beliefs of change is positive and, and and knowing how to have positive change and knowing how to approach change in a positive manner so to do that just clear your mind and take a deep breath and all you need to say is yes change and that's it. And I've gone way over, so I'm going to let you go. Have a great day. This is Angela with Today's a Cup of Sea.